and welcome to my channel my name is francisca and in today's video i'll be showing you how to make this beautiful pinafore dress the dress is very very simple to make as it requires you know just little measurements so a beginner can like do this very very easily if you are new to my channel welcome please click the subscribe button and click the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and now let's get right into the tutorial so this is the fabric that i'll be using in this pinafore tutorial and right here i have two yards of fabric cut out which will be used for only the skirt part i like my gathered skirts you know or pleated skirts to be really full so i'm using two yards of fabric for that we are going to be converting it to four yards and i'm going to show you how i do that I'll be putting my measurements on the screen so you guys can follow the cutting process of this tutorial. So now that we have all these measurements, I'm going to be doing a little subtraction here. So, so the full length that I mentioned earlier is 40 inches. What I'm going to do now is subtract my shoulder to waist, which is 16, from that 40 inches and I'll be left with 24 inches now from that 24 inches i'll be removing my two inches of band and that will give me 22 inches so my ankara fabric length that's from selvage to selvage for what i have here is 46 inches this one is not 45 inches thank god this is 46 inches i just folded it into two so let me just show you guys the measurements I'll place my tape rule at the folded part right here and then measure it all the way down and I have 23 inches which is amazing because what we calculated earlier after doing all the subtraction was 22 inches and we need you know allowance to hem the bottom and also to you know join this top part to the waistband so I'll be using half an inch to join the top part to the waistband I'll be using half an inch for the hemming allowance so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and divide this fabric along this folded part into two i've gone ahead to divide this into two at the top right here so i've placed them on top of each other with right sides touching by the time you do this you are going to you know be having all your selvage at only one side and this part you know will not have the selvage parts because we divided it into two so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and sew this piece up with a half an inch i'll also overlock the edges with my zigzag stitch so this part doesn't free and by the time i join this together i'm going to be you know ending up with four yards of fabric so after i join this what i'm going to do now is at this part that does not have the selvage throughout the entire four yards i'm going to be running a gathered stitch on top because we are going to be gathering these four yards to you know my waist circumference plus you know seam allowance for zip so i'll just go ahead and do everything that i have explained i have gathered the fabric to my waist measurements so this is what i have so can you see how very very full it is that's why I like using four yards when I'm making a gathered dress or gathered skirt for my waist size. It gives me a very, very full, you know, gathers. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and, you know, cut the bodice. So here's my fabric piece. I folded it into two already. I kind of like want to, you know, follow the pattern on the fabric such that it is, you know, really centered very well. So that is why I have this part kind of like folded like this it has like some geometric shapes going on here what i call this aztec now what i'm going to do is to mark from my shoulder to my waist and for me that is 16 inches then we'll be adding you know half an inch for seam allowance so i'm going to come right here mark 16 and half inches come right here again mark 16 and a half inches so 16 and a half inches is at the bottom and then i'm marking the top 
I'm marking two points so I can end up with a straight line. So I'll just go ahead and join this now. So for the upper part of this pinafore dress, we just need the shoulder and our waist. So I'm going to come right here, mark my shoulder measurement divided by 2. My shoulder is 15. 15 divided by 2, that is 7 and half. So I'm going to come right here now from the folded edge of the fabric. I'm going to mark 7 and half. Can you see? And then I'll come to my waist. My waist measurement, that's my waist circumference divided by 4 is 7.5. So I'll also mark 7.5 right here. Now, instead of me drawing a straight line like this, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is to go in from my shoulder by half inch. So can you see, I'll go in by half inch and then I'll go in from my waist by one inch or one and a half inch. So you can do one inch, you can do one and a half inch. This will sort of like create a slant towards, you know, your waist area. So I'm going to be going in by one and a half inch. So I'll just mark that one and a half inch here. And then I'll be connecting from this half inch that we've marked to my waist area with a slight curve. So this is what I have from my shoulder to my waist. And now for the neckline, what you want to do is to, you know, determine, you know, how deep you want your neckline to be. Do you want a V shape? Do you want a circular shape? Whichever you want. It actually depends on you. You can make your neckline whatever shape you want or, you know, whatever depth you want. So for this top part now, I'm going to be marking two inches here. The reason I'm marking two inches is because I want the strap of the blouse to be two inches in width. So from here now, it's connected to the strap that will, you know, go to the back of my body. So I'll just come right here, mark two inches. And then for my neckline, I'll be going with a round neckline. So I'll just come right here about four inches. And then I'll connect from here now to this point here with a curve. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Now what you want to do after doing this is to add a half an inch seam allowance. So I'll just come right here, connect it like this. Just add half an inch to yours. And we are going to be doing a shoulder slant. You can go with one inch, you can go with half an inch, you can even go with a quarter inches. So I'll just mark half inch here and then I'll connect these points with a straight line. Now we're supposed to add half an inch at the top right here for seam allowance. So I'll just add that. And this is what I have. Then I'll add half an inch at this side from my shoulder to my waist just add half an inch like this please measure and mark your allowances once all markings are done i'll go ahead and cut this after out. cutting this is what i have so can you see this is what i have now for this part of the bodies for the apina dress we need to cut two pieces one will be in front, the other will be serving as a lining on the inside. So I'll be using this one as my pattern now to cut the second piece. I have cut the second of this um, bodice for the top part. I use this as my pattern, like I said earlier. So this is what I have. What I'm going to do for this is to fuse one of the pieces that will be, you know, facing outside. The one that will be acting as lining, I will not bother to fuse it. So I'll just use normal fusible interfacing to, you know, fuse the top. I have cut my waistband as well. I cut it in such a way that I had to join the pieces up together. But this is a little longer than my 
you know, waist circumference so that we can have like a little overlap on the side where we are going to fix the zipper. So I have my waistband, I've cut two pieces because one will be on the outside and one will be on the inside. And I'm going to be fusing this with interfacing to thicken this up a bit. I've also gone ahead to cut the straps that will be going, you know, from the shoulder to my back where we are going to be attaching the end to a button on the waistband. So what I've done was to cut this to five inches. So by the time I fold it into two, so by half an inch seam allowance, I'll end up with two inches. So guys, my shoulder is measuring three inches two inches for the shoulder and then half an inch, half an inch for seam allowance. So it matches up to, you know, our strap that will be joined to the shoulder by the time we, you know, take in those seam allowances at both here and here. For my strap that will be attached to my shoulder and then running through my back, I cut it to 25 inches. I want this strap to sort of like crisscross at my back. So if you are doing a crisscross, your strap needs to be longer than you know when you are going straight at your back from you know your shoulder down to your waist so i made it longer if i was going from my shoulder down to my waist i'll probably be cutting around 18 inches but because i'm crisscrossing i you know cut longer for it and you need to cut two pieces because each one is you know going to be attached to each of the shoulder and it will be crisscrossed to be joined at your waist do you understand? So I'll just go ahead now and fuse everything that I need to fuse. The straps, my waistband, and then one of the bodies that will, you know, be facing outside. So I'll just go ahead and do this now. I have fused my waistband fabric, the two of them with interfacing. This is what I have. So right here, I have my fabric strap, the one that is going to go from my shoulder all the way to the waistband of my skirt. I have fused it as well and I've also fused one part of my bodice which is going to be acting as the main fabric right here I have my lining fabric so what I'm going to do now is to place this on top of each other this is acting as my lining fabric I'll place them on top of each other with right sides touching like this so can you see then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now I'm only going to sew this side, this side and my neckline with a half an inch seam allowance and I'll make sure to top stitch my neckline so that this kind of like, you know, sits really well on my body. So I'm going to do that for the bodies. I'll go ahead, take this to my sewing machine now. I'll fold it like this with right sides touching. I'll go ahead and stitch this down then I'll do the same thing for the other piece as well. Fold it like this and stitch it down with a half an inch seam allowance. So guys, I've sewn my straps like this, half an inch here, half an inch here. I've also sewn my bodice, the sides, and then the neckline. I also top stitched the neckline like I said earlier so that it will, you know, rest well on my body. So I'm going to keep this aside for now. What I'm going to do for this strap pieces is to, you know, fold the seam allowance or fold the seam to the center of the belt. So I'm just going to fold it like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch this part down with a half an inch seam allowance. I'll do the same thing for the second piece. Fold the seam to the middle of the piece and then stitch the top down with a half an inch seam allowance. And I'll be using this part right here to turn everything out. And then once I do that, I'll go ahead and you know press the belt flat like this. So the seam is going to be in the middle. So I'll just go ahead and do this now for the belt pieces. So guys, I have sewn, turned and pressed this strap. And this is what I have with the seam right in the middle of the strap. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and place my belt piece on the inside of this body. So I'm going to place it in like this and push it in towards the shoulder. 
So I'll just pull it like this and then I'll sew these parts down, the shoulder parts with a half an inch seam allowance. I'll do the same thing that I'm going to do here for this side. Put my belt piece inside with the seam on the belt, you know, touching the lining part of this bodies. Sew it up and then I'll turn everything right sides out. So after sewing the belt to the shoulder seam area, I'm going to go on to trim off excess bulk, especially at the neckline area, this part here. I'll just trim it off so that that place can, you know, rest really well. Come right here, trim this part as well. Then I'll go on to, you know, turn everything right sides out. Yep. So this is what it is going to look like. Then I'll just go ahead and give this a very, very good press. So this is how the front part is going to look like. And this part right here will sort of like crisscross at the back and then land at the waist. So can you see that mine is landing a little more than my waist? It's better for it to be longer than for it to be shorter. Do you understand? It's better longer than shorter. If it's short, you now start looking for how to add fabric to it and it's going to be a more, you know, difficult process. So if I decide I want to wear it straight, it's going to be, you know, like this and you realize that Crisscrossing it will take more of the strap than, you know, placing it straight like this. So can you see? So now that I'm done with this now, like I said, I'll go ahead and give this a very, very good press. So guys, if you remember, when I was drafting the bodice parts of this dress that we are making, I removed, you know, one and a half inch from the waist. I don't know if you can remember that. I removed one and a half inch. Now, I want the zipper on this dress to be at my side. So it means that I'll be having my overlap on the waistband at my side. If I want it to be at my back, that's if I want the zipper on this dress to be at my back, that means the overlap will be at my back. I'll be placing my bodies in the middle of this band. I hope we understand that. What I'm going to do now is to mark half an inch seam allowance on the waistband because we have to sew the edges by half an inch so i'll just come right here now and mark half an inch and then what i'm going to do is to go ahead and sew this part by half inch so i've sewn this down and this is what i have the next thing i'm going to do is to mark one and half inch away from the seam that i've sewn here so i'll come right here mark one and half inch and then what I'm going to do is to place this part, not at this top here, we're going to place it at the bottom, at that one and a half inches that we just marked. So can you see, it is not at the seam. Then I'll cover this up. So can you see what I'm doing? I'll cover this up and then I'll be sewing the bottom of this band with half an inch seam allowance all the way to the end. Do you understand? I'll sew it with half an inch seam allowance all the way to the end. Then I'll sew this part as well, close up this edge with a half an inch seam allowance. We placed these bodies at the bottom here, not at the top here, we placed it at the bottom so that by the time we sew and turn it, can you see our waistband will now come down for us to attach to the skirt that we are making. Do you understand? So I'll just go ahead and, you know, sew this piece like I've explained and sew this piece with a half an inch seam allowance. So guys, I've sewn the waistband to the bodice. What I'm going to do now is to go ahead and trim off the excess around this point. Then I'm going to create a notch right there so that by the time we poke it out it is going to you know come out pointed so you want to do this for edges or corners that you are working with edges or corners of pieces that you're working with so I'm going to go ahead now and turn this right sides out and then I'll poke this star part that we trimmed off I'll just go ahead and poke it out Make sure it comes out, you know, nice and neat. 
and then I'll do the same thing for this other side. So once you poke out both edges nice and neat, what you do is now, you know, bring the waistband to this side. Before I go ahead and, you know, press this down, what I'm going to do is to do a top stitch on the waistband that is, you know, going to face the lining part. So here is the lining part. I'll just go ahead now, grab everything like this and then top stitch on the waistband, you know, facing the lining. So it, you know, stays really put. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. Then I'll give this a press and we are going to move, you know, to working with our skirt piece. So guys, after gathering my four yards of fabric to, you know, my waist measurement, plus of course, seam allowance for zipper, I went ahead to, you know, stitch right on top of the gathers. This would help, you know, to flatten the folds that the gathers have made and it's not going to create any bulk by the time you, you know, attach it to your waistband. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and fix in my zipper. I'm using an invisible zip for this project. So I'll just go ahead and stitch the zipper down to my skirt before, you know, going ahead to attach the skirt to the body part of this dress that we are making. So I'll just go ahead and stitch with a half an inch seam allowance on this fabric. I went ahead to overlock the edges because the fabric is fraying with a zigzag stitch. So I'll just go ahead and stitch it down like this. So once I stitch this part down, I'll go ahead and, you know, stitch the other part of the zipper to the other end of the skirts with a half an inch seam allowance as well. So guys, after sewing my zipper, this is what I have. Can you see the zipper here? The next thing I'm going to do is to sew the rest of the skirt to close up this part that we have here. So I'm going to, you know, close up my zipper. And then what I'm going to do is to go ahead and, you know, sew from right where I stopped sewing at my zipper area, this bottom here. I will sew right from that point all the way to the end to close up this part of the skirt. The next thing I'm going to do is to hem the skirt, the bottom of the skirt with a half an inch seam allowance. I'm not a fan of, you know, having this written part of Ankara fabric showing out. That's why I'm going to hem it. But if you are okay with it, you can go ahead and leave it. It will actually even add to the length of your skirt. So that is what I'm going to do now for this skirt piece. This is my zipper right here. I've sewn the bottom as well. And I've also gone ahead to hem the bottom of my skirt. So we want to attach this to the waistband that is already, you know, connected to the bodice. My skirt is supposed to run from the edge of this waistband right here to, you know, my waist circumference. So what I'm going to do is to place my bodice on top of my skirt the part that has the interfacing, which is going to be on the outside, I placed it on the right side of my skirt. This part right here that is facing me is the part that is serving as lining. So what I'm going to do now is to place one side of the skirt where my zipper is. I'll place it like this. It's the edge of the waistband to the edge of the skirt and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew all the way you know around with a half an inch seam allowance do you understand till you know we get to this other end on the waistband so I'll just take this to my sewing machine now and sew this up after sewing the first part of the waistband to the waist of the skirt this is what I have what I'm going to do next is to fold in the second part of the waistband. I'll fold it in by half an inch seam allowance and then I'll stitch right at the edge of the waistband where we folded it. I'll stitch all around this waistband of the skirt to, you know, close up this raw edges. Like I said earlier, you can decide to, you know, wear your strap crisscross at the back or straight. But whichever you decide to go with, your buttonhole will be on the strap 
while your buttons would be on the waistband. So I just pinned it down, but I'm going to explain this to you guys. So like I said, your button holes will be on the strap. And where you have pinned down, just make sure that that is exactly where you're going to, you know, attach the button. So the strap and the button hole must match. Now, if you want the strap to be on the outside, your button will be on the outside of the waistband. Do you understand? But if you want the strap to be on the inside, like this, the button will be attached to the inside of the waistband. So this way, the excess of the strap is kind of like going to be hidden inside the waistband. So whether you are going straight or you are going crisscross, the principle remains the same. Button hole on strap and then button on waistband, whether inside or outside. I hope you understand this. So here is the final look of the dress. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, turn on the bell so you get updates when I post new videos and I'm going to be seeing you in my next tutorial. Bye!